Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by. I hope you're all having a great day. Today I just wanted to make a quick video on Nikola Motors. Now Nikola Motors has been in the news a lot lately and the stock is on fire. In this video I'm going to answer the question whether I think Nikola Motors is a buy, a sell, or a hold right now. Nikola is a very interesting stock for me for a couple of reasons. Number one, I'm currently a Tesla shareholder so I'm always interested when competitors come into the space and I make an effort to get to know their business. The second reason is I almost shorted some of their stock several weeks ago, so I've been passively keeping tabs on it. Now Nikola is making a similar chart pattern today as it was when I considered shorting it, only now the move is more extreme. So let me start by showing you why I almost shorted it last time, but of course last time the ticker symbol was VTIQ before the reverse merger. Now in early May, VTIQ caught my eye when it showed up on my new all-time high screen. Now, I had heard of Nikola Motors, but I didn't give it a whole lot of thought until right then. On that day, I started looking into them, and although I must admit their products did look pretty awesome, the financials were an absolute mystery. And when I say a mystery, I couldn't find anything. No income statements, no cash flow, no earnings, nothing, not a zilch. On the big update on May 12th was the day that I strongly considered shorting VTIQ. Now, I was going to short 75 shares, or right around $2,000 worth. Now, the next day, it traded higher again and reached a high of $35.38, so I would have been staring at a pretty good-sized loss right off the bat. But within a couple of days, it fell to the low 20s, but found support at the 8-period exponential moving average, or the white line on the chart, and slowly started moving higher. Now, I typically don't like to hold my shorts for very long because of the interest you have to pay. So I'd like to think I would have closed the position a week or so later, probably for around break even, maybe even a small gain. But if I didn't, I would be getting absolutely crushed right now. Say if I would have closed the position at $85 today, I would have realized a loss of 315%. So this would mean the original position of approximately $2,025 would have been all gone, and I would owe my broker an additional $4,350. Now, like I said before, I would like to think that I would have covered this short before this happened, but this is a great example of why you need to be extra careful when shorting because they can get out of control in a hurry. Now, probably the main reason I didn't go short was because my experience tells me you only short in downtrends. Now, I know it's cool when you're at a cocktail party and you can tell all your friends that you shorted at the absolute top and you bought at the absolute bottom, but when you're shorting stocks and uptrends, you're playing with fire. Now, it's much different trying to buy bottoms than short tops because you can lose more than you invested if you're wrong. So regardless of the fundamentals, if you're thinking of shorting this top, be careful because it can still go much higher very quickly. Now, I know there's a lot of people posting videos right now saying how skeptical they are of Nikola and how overvalued this company is. And in my opinion, they're absolutely right and they're making very compelling arguments. So it's extremely tempting to try to short this stock. But I'll say it one last time. If you're thinking of doing it, be careful. Now, if and when I decide to get short NKLA, I need three things to happen. First, it needs to have a blow-off move to the upside on huge volume, which we might be having right now. Then it needs a sharp move down below the 8-period exponential moving average, or the white line on the chart, and a bounce back up into it, with the last thing being it finds resistance at that moving average and rolls over again. You need to have patience with bubble-type stocks because you never know how far they might go. Like Warren Buffett says, stocks can remain irrational longer than you can remain solvent. Now, I'll make an obvious point, but I bet it's a point that a lot of traders, especially new traders, don't even think about. Even though it's so tempting to try to short a top, it really doesn't matter where you short the stock profit-wise because all you can ever make is 100%. So if you short a stock at 100 and it falls to zero, you make 100%. But if you wait and you short it at 50 and it falls to zero, you still make 100%. It's not like when you buy a stock at 100 and it goes to 200, you double your money. Then when it goes to 300, you triple your money and so on. What you need to do is wait for it to confirm a downtrend so your risk of it exploding higher is much less. So there's no need to ever rush a short trade. Professionals don't short tops. They wait for it to crash, and then when all hope is gone, they crush it lower. Now, in my opinion, this chart pattern does have all the characteristics of a blow-off top. So if you were lucky enough to have bought this stock a few weeks ago, well, first off, congratulations. We're not worthy! We're not worthy! We're not worthy! We're, We're not worthy! 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 We're not worthy
And second of all, you probably should be thinking about ringing the register on at least some of your position right now. If you did buy some a few weeks ago, please tell me about it in the comments below. I'd love to hear about when you bought it and how much you're up. Now, I just wanted to make one more point before I ended the video. I recently watched the Tesla Daily interview that they did with the CEO and founder Trevor Milton, and I just felt like he was trying to sell me something. I kept getting the vibe all he was trying to do was convince me that his company is the real deal. Now, don't get me wrong, I am 100% pulling for Nikola and anyone who's working hard to bring about a better future, whether it's through sustainable energy, better food, cleaner environment, or whatever. But I just kept getting the, you gotta trust me, you gotta trust me, you gotta trust me vibe. And one thing I learned a long time ago, it's to be most leery of the person who keeps saying, just trust me. I guess if anything this week, it's definitely piqued my interest in Nikola, and I'll be keeping a close eye on it in the future. So in closing, even though I don't own any Nikola stock right now, if I did, I would certainly be a seller at these levels. But I certainly would not be shorting yet because I think you're going to get better opportunities in the future to do that, and they should be much less risky once the hype dies down. But if I do decide to take a position in Nikola in the future, I will certainly make a video and keep you posted. Now, I just wanted to end the video by saying, as always, this is not trading advice, only my own personal opinion on NKLA. Please do your own analysis and come up with your own conclusions. Thank you so much for watching the video, and until next time, take care, everybody.